kilometers are divided into segments called plates. There are six major plates and several small ones. According to the theory called plate tectonics, these plates move about on Earth, carrying continents and ocean floor with them. Continental motion has been measured at from one to five centimeters per year. As the plates continue to move about, this will produce a slow change in Earth's geography. Each year, for instance, the Atlantic Ocean becomes slightly wider. There is a very important point to be stated here. God has referred to the motion of mountains as a drifting action in the verse. Today, modern scientists also use the term continental drift for this motion. Unquestionably, it is one of the miracles of the Qur'an that this scientific fact, which has been recently discovered by science, was announced in the Qur'an. Iron is one of the elements highlighted in the Qur'an. In Surat al-Hadid, meaning iron, we are informed. And we sent down iron, in which there lies great force, and which it has many uses for mankind. The word sent down, particularly used for iron in the verse, could be thought of having a metaphorical meaning to explain that iron is given to the service of people. But when we take into consideration the literal meaning of the word, which is being physically sent down from the sky, we realize that this verse implies a very significant scientific miracle. This is because modern astronomical findings have disclosed that the metal of iron found in our world has come down from giant stars in outer space. The heavy metals in the universe are produced in the nucleus of big stars. Our solar system, however, does not have a suitable structure to produce iron on its own. Iron can only be produced in much bigger stars than the sun where the temperature reaches a few hundred million degrees. When the amount of iron exceeds a certain level in a star, the star can no longer bear it and eventually it explodes in what is called a nova or a supernova. As a result of this explosion, meteors containing iron are scattered around the universe and they move through the void until attracted by the gravitational force of a celestial body. All this shows that the metal iron did not form on the Earth, but was carried from exploding stars in space via meteors and was sent down to Earth, exactly the same way as stated in the verse. It is clear that this fact could not have been scientifically known in the 7th century when the Qur'an was revealed. And we sent down iron, in which there lies great force, and which has many uses for mankind. In addition, the 25th verse of Surat al-Hadid, which refers to iron, includes two interesting mathematical codes. Surat al-Hadid is the 57th surah in the Qur'an. The numerical value of the word al-Hadid in Arabic, in other words, is abjad, is the same number, 57. The numerical value of the word Hadid alone is 26, and 26 is the atomic number of iron.
In a verse of the Qur'an, the fecundating characteristic of the winds and the formation of rain as a result are mentioned. And we sent the fecundating winds, then caused water to descend from the sky, therewith providing you with water in abundance. In this verse, it is pointed out that the first stage in the formation of rain is wind. Until the beginning of the 20th century, the only relationship between the wind and the rain that was known was the wind's driving clouds. However, modern meteorological findings have demonstrated the fecundating role of the winds in the formation of rain. This fecundating function of the wind works in the following way. On the surface of oceans and seas, countless air bubbles form because of the foaming action. The moment these bubbles burst, thousands of tiny particles with a diameter one hundredth of a millimeter are thrown into the air. These particles known as aerosols, mix with dust carried from land by winds and are carried to upper layers of the atmosphere. These particles carried to higher altitudes by winds come in contact with water vapour up there. Water vapour condenses around these particles and turns into water droplets. These water droplets first come together and form clouds and then fall on the earth in the form of rain. As seen, winds fecundate the water vapour floating in the air with the particles they carry from the sea and eventually help the formation of rain clouds. If winds did not possess this property, water droplets in the higher atmosphere would never form and there would be no such thing as rain. The most important point here is that this critical role of the winds in the formation of rain was stated centuries ago in a verse of the Qur'an at a time when people knew almost very little about natural phenomena. Another fact given in the Qur'an about rain is that it is sent down on earth in due measure. This is mentioned in Surat al zukhruf as follows. It is he who sends down water in due measure from the sky by which we bring a dead land back to life. That is how you too will be raised from the dead. This measure in rain has again been discovered by modern research. It is estimated that in one second approximately 16 million tons of water evaporate from the earth. This figure amounts to 513 trillion tons of water in one year. This number is equal to the amount of rain that falls on the earth in one year. This means that water continuously circulates in a balanced cycle according to a measure. Life on Earth depends on this water cycle. Even if people had used all the technology in the world, they would not be able to produce this cycle artificially. Even a minor deviation in this amount would very soon give rise to a major ecological imbalance that would bring about the end of life on Earth. Yet, this never happens 